One of the long-running features of the Battlefield franchise is its combined arms gameplay. You've got tanks mixing it up with infantry, and airplanes adding to the chaos from above. I'm a bit of a jack-of-all-trades in the Battlefield series, but I've always loved flying the planes in every single Battlefield game out there. So, when I learned that Battlefield 5 was going to be set in a World War II setting, I was thrilled. This is the golden age of dogfighting. Today, I'm very excited to share with you guys a first look at those planes in Battlefield 5, thanks to a special EA Game Changer event here at EA Play in Hollywood. I'm going to take a look at what planes are available for both of the current factions in the test version of the game, which is the British as well as the Germans. We're going to look at the different variants available for each one of those planes, and then I've got some footage of those planes in action for you guys here in this first look. All of the gameplay in today's video is going to be from the Grand Operations map, Narvik. This operation is going to be three and possibly even four full days of operations in the final build of the game, but for this preview event, it was just the first two days. This made things a little bit tricky because planes aren't a spawn option for every single one of the points during the operation, but here's how they worked. The British were able to spawn planes for the second and third attack points. However, the Germans only got to spawn their planes on their very last set of defensive points there on day two. Despite playing the game for close to seven hours today, I only got a little bit of footage of the German planes because their spawns were so rare. You had to have a team that pushed all the way to the end and then stopped there. And then of course I was fighting everyone else on the team to get one. The first plane for the British is going to be a staple of their air force throughout the entire war. That is of course, the Spitfire. Half of them have now been eliminated. The first variant is the VA variant which is armed with four 303 machine guns as its primary weapon, as well as a secondary dual 20mm Hispano autocannon. Let's stop right there, guys, because this is where one of the big changes to air combat in Battlefield 5 comes in. No longer will the ground attack weapons, like this 20mm cannon, have unlimited ammo for pilots. Pilots will have to resupply at an icon floating over their team's side of the map. This means that pilots attacking ground forces are going to have to carefully plan out their attacks. Additionally, instead of just looping back around and coming right back down onto a target, a pilot really ought to be heading back to their base at least every other run to resupply, because each resupply only gives you one magazine of ammo for your ground attack weapon. Or, for example, one set of bombs for your bombing weapon. This also has a neat effect of making attack runs a lot more drawn out versus those just very tight arcadey loops. Okay, back to the Spitfire though. Its abilities include a quick repair, which allows you to get a quick burst of health back after you've taken some surprise damage, perhaps from a flak attack. And a secondary quick option is Nitrous, which makes the already very fast Spitfire even faster for a short period of time. Passive ability options for the VA variant include improved control surfaces and improved self-repair. Now, there's no descriptions for what those do just yet, but I would imagine that improved control surfaces might affect how your plane turns in the air, improving that, and improved self-repair most likely means that you'll get a slightly higher limit to what you can self-repair while you're in the air, because you can no longer completely self-repair your airplanes. Much like Battlefield 5's much more limited auto-regen health system, the new auto-repair for planes in Battlefield 5 only lets you repair a limited amount of damage up to a certain point. So if you're down to about 20 health, only expect to go to about 50 with the self-repair. You'll have to fly back to your base, at which point you'll be allowed to auto-repair the rest of the way back to 100 health on your vehicle. To balance this out though, you can now actually make maneuvers while auto-repairing. Although remember guys, this is a pre-alpha version of the game and all of this could change in the future. The second variant of the Spitfire, the MKVB, is equipped with dual 50 caliber machine guns instead of the quad 303 machine guns on the VA variant. The 50 cals here make it heavier hitting against ground targets as well as enemy bombers, but without those smaller 303s with their faster bullet velocity, you're going to have a harder time chasing enemy fighters. This Spitfire is an interesting mix between 
a air superiority fighter and one that can still focus a bit more on taking out infantry and vehicles on the ground. It also has a flare option as one of its quick options to help your allies on the ground spot targets. On a side note, the new flare effect looks awesome. For the VB variant's passive abilities, it has improved loading mechanisms as well as upgraded armor. Again, no descriptions for these yet, but the improved loading mechanism most likely decreases your amount of time that it takes to reload your weapons, and upgraded armor most likely helps you against ground fire. I'll go ahead and just ask your forgiveness guys if I mispronounce this, but the medium bomber option for the British in this map is going to be the Blenheim Mark IF. Its primary weapon is a single 303 machine gun, giving it some capability to try to harass enemy fighters, but as you might imagine, it cannot chase them very effectively, nor can it outturn them. But its secondary weapon is a set of four 250 pound bombs. I think it's pretty obvious what those are for. Its quick abilities include a quick repair, and a special ability, a set of eight 40 pound bomblets. The bomblets are a great addition to a strafing run, much like the attack planes bomblets in Battlefield 1. The passive abilities include a twin 303 dorsal turret, so that a teammate can keep enemy fighters off of your tail, and quick abilities include quick rearm, as well as armored fuselage. You've also got an option for a nose gunner armed with twin 303 machine guns as well. Alright, that brings us to the Germans. For their primary fighter here on this map, the Germans are going to have the uh, basically backbone of the Luftwaffe, the BF 109 G6. It's armed with two MG 131 machine guns as its primary weapon, with a secondary MG 151, which is a 20mm machine gun. Those 20 mils have a great amount of splash damage, but a very quick depletion rate, so you're going to want to go back to your base and rearm pretty frequently if you're going to be attacking multiple ground targets. Passive abilities include a quick repair, as well as nitrous for a speed boost, which is very good because, in my experience, my BF-109 was never able to outturn a Spitfire, even with the speed boost. The Spitfire is just much more nimble. From what I was able to tell though, my BF-109 was able to tank a bit more damage, compared to the Spitfire. Passive abilities include a high altitude kit. Again, no description there, but I would imagine this is where the superior turning ability of the Spitfire could possibly be overcome. It sounds like the BF-109, like in real life, might have a higher altitude ceiling. I'll have to get some more time with it to be sure. If your focus is going to be on ground targets though, let's say that your team has air superiority, you're going to want to select the German close air support fighter, which is of course going to be the Stuka. And yes, as first noticed by Flakfire, who you guys should definitely go check out if you haven't, the Jericho Siren is 100% present in game and it sounds incredibly intimidating. <laughs> The primary weapons for the Stuka are going to be twin 7.92mm machine guns, which gives it some offensive ability when taking on enemy fighters, but it also has a set of four 50kg bombs for taking out ground targets. This first Stuka variant, the V1, also has the quick abilities of wing repair, which allows you to instantly repair a damaged wing and hopefully keep you from spinning down to the earth, along with a single 1000kg bomb as a special ability only. The Stuka B1's secondary passive abilities are very, very important. First up, you've got your passenger machine gun. He's armed with a 7.92mm machine gun to keep those fighters off of your tail, hopefully. But you've also got dive brakes, which it looks like those dive brakes are going to allow you to slow your descent during an attack run and get more time on target. The second Stuka variant, the B2, swaps out a couple of things. Your dual machine guns have been replaced with a dual 37mm autocannon. This thing fires slowly, but does pack a nice punch. I have a feeling that this autocannon is going to be one of those weapons that experienced players who practice with it are really going to appreciate. Those four 50kg bombs from the B1 variant have been replaced here with the B2 variant with a single 250kg bomb. But because of that, you don't get your 1000kg special ability bomb. You do still get your wing repair ability, as well as your rear machine gun. However, the dive brakes have been replaced with armored fuselage, 
which I would imagine does protect you from that additional ground fire. So there you have it guys, those are the six plane variants that we've seen so far in this EA Play preview build of Battlefield 5. As you guys can tell, I had a blast flying them, and I can't wait to see more of air to ground combat, as well as air to air combat in Battlefield 5, and how that interacts with the different maps and modes that we're going to see coming up as we get closer to launch. For now, make sure you guys like the video if you enjoyed it, it definitely helps the channel out. And if you guys want to see some more stuff from Battlefield 5, make sure you subscribe because there's definitely more to come. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.